Thanks for the introduction, Rick. Uh, excited to share about the Manure database project called Manure DB. Um, that's included in this webinar today. Um, some of you at the previous Waste to Worth conference um, in 2022 in Toledo, Ohio, we remember hearing us talk about the start of this project. We were just getting going, and now we're uh, excited to share some of the progress that has been made over the last few years. Yep, I am currently a graduate student at the University of Minnesota. Uh, just a quick little overview. I mean, I'm sure many of this audience knows livestock manure can provide nutrients for cropping systems. And a lot of these reference values, if you don't have a manure sample that people look at for published book values, are several decades old. Uh, the university as I mentioned, received some grant funding to help create a manure nutrient database that we are calling ManureDB. And along with this, we're partnering with laboratories and researchers that analyze manure to help create this database. Uh, it's currently in a public website form, and we do have a data download option. So why do we even use book values? Uh, sometimes they are used in developing manure management plans when there is no manure sample, especially for brand new livestock locations where there isn't even any um, manure to sample to make sure you have enough land. Um, help establish best um, nutrient management practices, you know, just using as baselines for nutrient management education, and then also for research and modeling um, purposes. For our manure database project, um, we're partnered with the Minnesota Supercomputing Institute and also have a stakeholder group across the country helping guide this project. Um, we have developed a schema, which is kind of the backbone of the how it's laid out for the project to create this database and then also then putting together uh, a public website for it. Again, a big part of this is our laboratory cooperation. Um, we have been working on cleaning and uploading data over the past year and currently have over 489,000 samples in the database more getting processed as we speak. So our project team, uh, of course, through the Min University of Minnesota Extension, our College of Food, Agricultural and Natural Resource Sciences, the Supercomputing Institute, Minnesota Department of Agriculture, and then, of course, the different laboratories we work with, alternative energy groups, like professionals, researchers, engineers, regulatory folks, and also commodity groups or have been involved in this project. A big important component to this project um, is privacy, data privacy. Uh, we developed a data use agreement between the University of Minnesota and any uh, par participants in the project. Um, we don't want any names or addresses associated with any of the samples. Um, we can upload state or the first three digits of a zip code into the database, but the finest geography that is posted on the public website is by state. And we also have at least five samples per year per geography to publicly show up in summaries. So if there's only one certain kind of a animal farm in one state, they won't be easily identifiable. Uh, another big thing with working with the, these many parties in, of laboratories is yeah. dealing with how they export their data and what they call their data and what units are the, is the data in. Uh, we end up creating a data template to help standardize these fields. So here's some of the columns that we have, including the name, the year, uh, some of the different dates for sample processing, um, sample ID, location and notes, manure type, the animal or other amendment type, if there's any treatment, agitation, bedding type, storage type, length of storage, application method, and then all the different analytes um, that were analyzed at the lab. 
And of course, no sample has all of these things recorded, but we would, if some labs capture this information, we would incorporate it into the template if possible, or glean from the sample notes if they were descriptive enough. And then the list of analytes included, of course, a lot of the things you think about, moisture, total solids, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and then all sorts of other um, micronutrients, metals, different ratios. Again, what other, any kind of thing we found, we would uh, add it in to the options. And for each analyte, we have to select which analytical method we use, which basis it's reported on, and which unit. So we used the recommended methods of manure analysis publication to start that off with, and it was actually just recently updated. Um, if you're interested in that, then check out that QR code or this web link. And then also referred to a Gateways Modus Agronomic Testing Lab standard. Um, they're actually working on updating as well right now. So based off of those, and then also again, um, when we're visiting with the labs and understanding what they're using for their um, analytical methods, also want to know if it's on a wet or a dry basis, and then what type of units it's getting reported in. And this is the big announcement. If you had not already seen, our website is live manuredb.umn.edu, check out the QR code. Um, kind of had a soft launch last summer um, and been steadily improving and adding more information to it all the time. So definitely, if you haven't taken a look at it, uh, open that up and start looking around sometime. We do have... Uh, 21 signed data use agreements so far. We have some other ones pending. Signatures said over 489,000 samples, um, over 482 with known locations. So this all points to over 5 million data points um, in the data in the database. And we're pretty proud. We have at least a sample from 49 states plus DC and Puerto Rico. And we are working on Alaska. Maybe soon, we'll see. Uh, just a few screenshots of the website so far. I mean, you can sort by different years, states, types, animals. Lots of different ways you can try to view some summary data on the main page. And a recent feature just in January is now you have the option to download data if you wish. Uh, on the Data Explorer tab, at the top, you can you know, select by the animal combined category or more specific animal type, um, our moisture designation region on um, state or year. And kind of see, it also helps because it shows you the number of samples for those two. So you can kind of see which combinations you might be able to, um, how many samples there are for any of those particular combinations you're interested in. So yeah, this is a super exciting feature. There's uh, more details on some of these links about what the descriptions mean um, if you are interested in that. Uh, why, why would anyone even care about this kind of stuff or how could it even be useful? I mean, again, of course, your own manure samples are always the best um, to get a good picture of what kind of nutrients that you are working with on your farm. However, this offers some uh, helpful comparison scenarios and benchmarking opportunities, uh, and also comparisons across the country and how perhaps it's changed over time as well. And then also uh, quite a few options for research opportunities with this large data set. I'd like to just go through a few quick comparisons of some things we've pulled out that you know could be of interest for people. Uh, I pulled out dairy manure types that we have in the database so far, so far based on manure type, we have digested liquid, separated liquid, 
separated solid, solid, and compost, and then nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And the middle is the median um, value, and then the bars are the 75th to 25th percentile. So this is like the middle 50% of samples shown. For reference, so it's just kind of neat. You could do some more comparisons like this to see it and what we're working with for different different options. And then at the bottom, how many different of these types of samples there are. Another way we could split it out is by the actual animal type. You know, sometimes we only can see that a sample says it's dairy and you don't know exactly what life stage it is. And see, we have over 90,000 samples that fall in that category. But in some other cases, we also know if it's dairy heifer or calf, or if it's just cattle. We don't know if it's dairy or beef necessarily. But kind of interesting to be able to check out and see what um, some of those comparisons might be. So pull out some of the poultry subtypes that we have in the database. Again, some are just listed poultry. Um, Others, we have just chicken, don't know what kind of chicken, but we have also a breeder, broiler, layer, pullet, turkey. Yeah. Very robust amount of broiler data, you can see. So it's just kind of, yeah, interesting to be able to pull out some of these comparisons. A lot of them have similar um, trends across, but as you can see, broilers and layers seem to have um, perhaps a little different pattern for P and K uh, from each other. So. Interesting things we can pull out also is looking over time. I just pulled out the Midwest region from 2001 to 2023, over 2,000 samples, and just looking at median phosphorus levels. And this isn't for um, segregating out storages or anything, just everything combined. And you can kind of see the trend of phosphorus levels going lower. And I've previously worked in a swine business doing nutrient management planning, and I would say we could would also have noticed that same trend as well in manure sample data. Uh, a few more plans for this project. Uh, we're updating it with some design updates, we're going to make it uh, more mobile friendly. At the moment, it's not the best viewing on a phone, it's better on a, a computer. Adding some more data visualization displays, like converting some of those tables on that, the home page into some more graphical format. We're also starting the process to archive data on an annual basis with USDA's egg data, egg data commons and assigning a DOI to it. Um, we have the opportunity to really test the ability to connect um, through an API. And also continually working to recruit more uh, partners to help participate in the database. So if anyone's interested, please reach out. We'll be happy to talk with you. And then also trying to streamline an annual data update process. We're not just trying to get this data one time and be done. We'd like to continually archive annually and keep this uh, project growing and current. I'd like to a quick acknowledgement to my advisors, Dr. Melissa Wilson and Dr. Aaron Cordes, along with um, retired extension engineer, Kevin Yanni, um, Larry Gunderson at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, and Kevin Silverstein at Minnesota Computing Institute. If you are interested in learning more, you can always email us at menor at umn.edu or Sign up for our uh, email listserv and we'll send out any major updates um, as they come about this project. Then thank you so much for your interest in today's webinar and we'll take questions later on. So thank you much.